Hey there, awesome physics students. We want to talk about free fall. Free fall is a situation in which only gravity is acting on something, and then we can study the motion of that uh, using our normal acceleration velocity and position time graphs. Okay? Um, free fall is a situation like, for example, if I have a, this uh, soccer ball and I throw it up in the air and it comes back down. While it's in the air, it's only we're assuming that only gravity is acting, and in that case, it's under free fall conditions. Okay, so let's under let's see if we can analyze the the motion of free fall just a little bit to understand it a bit better. Um, if we take the soccer ball example as I did, uh, it's traveling up. On the way up, it's uh, it's slowing down, and so the displacements for equal time intervals is reducing, getting less and less, and at the top it stops actually, the velocity is zero at the top. Then it turns around and comes back down, and as it comes down it gains speed, and so the displacements for equal time intervals increases. Okay, so this is what a motion diagram would look like. And if we look at a velocity vectors on the way up, they're going to look like that. Uh, let's look at the acceleration uh, based on the change in velocity vector from these two vectors on the way up. So if we call this one our initial velocity and this one our final velocity, remember we want to find delta v, uh, which is uh, delta, because delta v over delta t is the acceleration, and those are vectors. So uh, we want to take uh, final minus initial, so we start with the final velocity, and then we add to that the negative of the initial velocity, and we put that at the tip to tail like that. And then for the change in velocity vector, we start where we start and we end where we end. And so the delta v vector points down. Therefore, the acceleration vector points down on the way up. And this makes sense. The velocity is up, the acceleration is down, therefore it must be slowing down. That's consistent with what we've talked about before. On the way down, uh, the velocity vectors, of course, are pointing down and they're increasing. And so we can do the same sort of analysis here. At this point, though, the initial velocity would be there, and then the final velocity would be there. And again, we do the same thing. We take final minus initial, so let me take the final velocity vector, and I'll add to that the negative of the initial velocity vector. I've got to flip the directions to get the negative of the initial. And again, we start where we start, and we finish where we finish, and therefore the delta v vector again points down. And again, this is consistent with what we've talked about before. The velocity is down, the acceleration is down. When those two are in the same direction, it will speed up. Okay. What is the magnitude of the velocity, uh, excuse me, the acceleration in this case? Well, under free fall conditions, we say the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second per second. And this means that the velocity will change, or we add, negative 9.8 meters per second to the velocity each second. Okay, uh, And of course this is assuming that we're using a coordinate system where up is positive, which just feels right and normal, and why wouldn't you do that? Uh, because this is such a commonly used constant, 9.8 meters per second per second, we give it its own uh, variable name, g. g does not stand for gravity. Do not use g. Do not say g is gravity because that is not true. g is uh, an acceleration under certain circumstances. Gravity is a force. They are different things. Um, however, uh, we say g is 9.8 meters per second per second. And notice that g is positive. And in, in this situation, we say that acceleration is negative g. So the g itself is a positive number, but then we add a negative by hand out front. Okay. Now, an interesting thing is, it seems for, it, this is, seems like it's telling us that all objects fall under with the same acceleration, but isn't that wrong? Don't some more massive objects fall at a faster rate than less massive objects? Well, we can go through a, a quick thought experiment to examine the properties or the, the consequences of this idea. So let's do that. Imagine that you have uh, 
two objects, one's more massive than the other, and we're going to start with the initial assumption that more massive objects do fall with greater acceleration than less massive objects. Okay, so as this as these fall, the more massive object is going to outpace the less massive object. This is going to fall with greater acceleration. Okay, so now here's part of the experiment. Imagine that we tie these together. We tie these together with a little string, and then we let them fall. Well, as it falls, the more massive one, if our assumption is correct, the more massive one is going to want to fall more quickly, and the less massive one is going to drag. And the uh, acceleration of this, of this whole thing will be less than the acceleration of the large object, but bigger than the acceleration of the small object. Okay? Now, let us modify the experiment just a little bit. Let's shrink that rope that's binding them and just put them right next to each other. So basically glue them together. At what, at, at, with what acceleration will this object fall? Well, on one hand, it's more massive than either this or this, so it should fall with greater acceleration than even this one massive one alone. But on the other hand, it seems like it's the same, and this one we said would fall with less acceleration than that one, but greater than that one. So which is it? Well, this is a contradiction, right? It cannot be both, cannot fall with greater acceleration than this one and less acceleration than this one at the same time. So our initial assumption is wrong. And in fact, if gravity is the only force acting, all things will accelerate on the surface of the Earth with the same acceleration, negative g.